Hello and welcome to UEA TV's news show for everything UEA, Viewpoint. Coming up on this edition, we will be looking at the latest news on campus and in Norwich from the last week. One of the biggest headlines resonating around UEA this week and this month especially is the focus on LGBT month and the events being held on campus to celebrate and recognise it. UEA are holding events to celebrate LGBT month already this week. There have been lectures including that from literature lecturer BJ Epstein and social events run by LGBT officer Richard Laverick and the UEA Pride Society. All events are free to attend and look great for learning, understanding and enjoying LGBT month. The Union LGBT officer Richard Laverick met with us to discuss what's still to come up around campus to celebrate LGBT month, in addition to speaking about the university's recent decision to not raise the pride flag. Take a look. So the point of LGBT history month is LGBT history month, if I say things right. It's basically we kind of get together and celebrate kind of the past that we've had, but also kind of look into the future. So it's it's kind of each person has a different view in it. Some people think, what the hell, what's the point of it? You know, it's like brown haired people getting together to celebrate their you know the history of brown haired people. But when we share such a strong history, so you look back to the Stonewall riots in New York, and that was just such a kind of a moment of everyone get back together and just you know fighting back for against oppression, and that's kind of it's celebrating that history. And realising actually we've got a lot to do now, and it's you know the work isn't done because you know just because you're gay doesn't mean that it well it doesn't define you it's just part of who you are. But when you've shared you've all got shared experiences, so like having the emotions of wanting to come out, some people coming out, you know it's everyone shared that experience. And when you kind of share the experience of walking down the street being kind of sneered at sometimes, it's like yeah this is important we need to do something about it. So it's. Yeah, there's definitely work to do, and it's just it's more about raising awareness and just making sure everyone's everyone's having fun and equal. So it's, it's really important to acknowledge LGBT, LGBT history month because it's when when you're a minority. I think with the kind of recent thing going through the Parliament about equal marriage, there was one MP who kind of put it perfectly, and um, she was she's a lesbian uh, conservative MP, and she just sort of said, "When you've been, yeah, you know, we should celebrate differences. We should do that all the time, but when you've grown up different." For once, it's really nice to be treated equally and to be treated normally. And that's kind of pushing the message about this. It's kind of saying, you know, look, we are different, but we want to make sure that everyone knows about the, the problems. So we're kind of trying to push across saying, you know, there is something to fight for. We're not, for, we are maybe equal, but there's still stigma in the community. And it's, that's, that's kind of the big message behind it. It's more raising awareness within our community and, and beyond. So we had six events for this month, um, six events that we're doing for free. There's loads around the city as well if you kind of go online and have a look. We have uh, a social. Well, there's, kind of, there's two events going on that week. It's on the 15th is Cartel's first um, kind of gay student night, which is going to be amazing. Um, so that's kind of a bigger night out. And on Friday we've got a really kind of relaxed social. We've taken over the playhouse and it's just going to be anyone's welcome. Um, then after that, it's kind of our big three main events, which is on the 18th we've got a film called Prayers for Bobby. And that's, it's, about, it's a true story based on a mum. She's really, really religious, and her son was gay, and he kills himself. And it's her coming to terms with it afterwards, and it's the Gurney Weaver who's just amazing. And that's free to the Hive on, I think, 7.30. Uh, the bar's open, so it's going to be a really relaxed kind of night. And then the following week is exactly the same, but with Milk, which is... It's another true story based on Harvey Milk, who was the first openly gay um, American politician. And then the final event is, because we've got the elections coming up for the year for the Union, so people are going to be replacing me, and we have, hopefully we're going to have about five candidates for LGBT officer, which is amazing. So having our first ever Q&A session, so you can come along and you know, shout and scream at the officers and ask them questions. Um, but it, it, it's a weird one, because we, when we started off, we've been asking them for about... Two, two or three years now. So I think it's in October, there's um, the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. And we ask them every year to fly it for that. Um, and, norm and, and, and for LGBT history, month. not for the entire month, just for a day at the beginning to symbolise it. And they've just been silent all the time, they never get back to us. Um, but this year they said no, so we were quite disappointed really. And, and the, the reason they gave, it's sort of understandable, they said it's, you know, the old flag is for ceremonial purposes. And we never really changed from that. 
But I said, well, the, the, you know, the precedent is from other universities who are willing, and you know, the university hospital, the, the local governments do it, um, police stations do it. If they all feel that they can take down their flag for one day, then that shows a really good, strong message. But, so we were disappointed with the university. A great lineup of events for an interesting and relevant cause, and a thank you to Richard for speaking with us. If you are interested in hearing more, go to our YouTube account, UEA TV, to find the extended interview with Richard in which he speaks more about the recent same-sex marriage bill to pass in the Commons, marking a great step in progress for the LGBT community. In other news, a group of UEA graduates are some of the first young entrepreneurs to receive a government startup loan. James Thomas, Seb Atkinson and Dave Duncan, who all graduated from UEA in 2012, have been awarded a loan of £5,000 for their social media consultancy business, Square Social. James and Dave have joined us in the studio to discuss their business and to tell Liz all about their plans for the future. Thanks Annabelle. Here with me now are James Thomas and Dave Duncan, the UEA graduates who have set up Square Social, one of the first companies to receive the government's new start-up funding. Hi guys. Hi UEA. Hi UEA. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your business Square Social. What is it you guys exactly do? I mean what would you like to know specifically? Have you got any? Um, in terms of sort of the market area that you guys operate in. Yeah, so the service we offer, um, we've branded it as Social Search. Uh, so what that is, is basically a combination of SEO, social media and content marketing. Um, so in a nutshell, it's kind of like online digital marketing. Um, and we use this to help small, medium and large enterprises grow their business um, by requiring new customers. Okay. Um, so in a nutshell, yeah, that's what we do. Okay. And how did you all get involved in the business? Um, um, sort of by accident, really, yeah. wasn't it? Pure coincidence. Um, James actually ran another social media agency while he was in university mm. okay. um, and after I graduated I went on to be a uh, sales director at a local business as well. One day I think James messaged me asking for a few sales tips obviously mm -hmm. um, that he wanted for his new business. I actually too was just messaging him as well at sort of the same time seeing mm. how he was getting on because mm -hmm. it's, it's good to speak to sort of like-minded people. Mm -hmm. um, then we just sort of agreed to meet up and see if we could do anything together really. Mm. Um, and see what we could do and it sort of grew from there really. Yeah. Started off very small, um, but obviously now we're at the stage now we're taking on, you know, on our fifth graduate now, fifth UA graduate, so it's got, got to this point in the last six months, it's been a long journey, but mm. it's been worth it, 100%. Great. And did you both think that you would be setting up your own business when you graduated? Mm. No, I didn't. Um, I know James obviously did, but yeah, I mean, I, I started um, my first company, well, the company before this when I was in, uh, I think, like the start of midway through year two. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like I wasn't thinking, I was kind of thinking a few steps ahead. Mm. Um, so it's kind of, I guess, yeah, I always had in my mind that I was going to do my own thing rather than kind of go into law or traditional path. I, I went, I was thinking going down the traditional route. I even did like um, a GDL after my degree. Um, I was ready to move back to London, do the LPC, but it was just... It just seemed pointless wasting, you know, 14 grand without even the promise of a training contract. Um, and then I actually met a couple of local of my friends who actually were local entrepreneurs. Um, I got into business with them. They sort of took me under their wing, taught me everything I knew, really, from marketing, sales, uh, finance, legal, everything about business, really. Um, and then 18, I did that for 18 months. So literally my first bit of commercial experience was in a startup environment. We actually started up another business back then. So that's all I know really. So I, I know that it's very tough out there, but to be honest, you know, um, I don't. I don't even regret regret that decision at all. I mean, yeah. it's definitely the way forward compared to law, definitely. Okay. And what has your experience been of running your own business? What's it like on a day-to-day -day basis? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's literally the hardest thing that you ever do, but it's also the most rewarding thing that you'll ever do. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about you know, the, the tech startup dream, which is basically, you know, the, the Facebook story, you know, the two co-founders meet, they're both techies, they go for funding, and then it's kind of like a whirlwind journey from there. Um, the reality is that, you know, 99% of the businesses out there aren't going to be, you know, a Facebook or an Apple. And the journey for most people is start from scratch, kind of like in your, in your bedroom, you know, meeting in bars and pubs to kind of discuss things, and then working your way up from there. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's very different to how it's portrayed. Um, but again, it's also, 
you know, there's no other way you're going to end up kind of pitching like the global marketing director at MasterCard, age 21. Um, so it's very rewarding, but it's also very, very difficult. Um, yeah, I mean, imagine, well, when I first started 18 months ago, imagine 14 hour days, six days a week for a year, basically. Um, but then on the, on, the, on the plus side, you know, you get to make your own choices about your decision, uh, about your lifestyle, sorry, uh, about, you know, how much time you spend on what. And you know that at the end of the day, if you're not working and bringing in the money, then no one else is. So it pushes you and motivates yourself even more. And, you know, it's got, you've, got, you've got to do it with something you love, I think, because if you can't motivate yourself every day, then there's no way you're going to be able to grow a team and motivate others beneath you. No way. Okay. And do you think it's important that young entrepreneurs and startup businesses have this kind of government funding that you have received? I think mm. yes and no. Yeah. Um, I think I, I don't think it. I don't know. I think in terms of funding, I think a loan is is the wrong choice. Um, I think if we'd have got funding when we first started, that would have been the worst thing for us, because to go out there with a business plan that's unproven, it, I think it, it's the wrong thing to do, because you kind of have to learn and work your way up. You have to fail basically. Um, because I think if we've been given the money before we failed, because the first thing that happens when you start a business is you write up a business plan, you've got all these figures and projections, you're like, yeah, it's going to be amazing, we're going to be you know, like, turning over this amount within months, and then you know, the market just tells you, well, no, nobody wants this, no, you know, nobody wants to buy what you've got. Mm. Um, so I think what would have been really helpful for me, um, me personally, is a lot more focus on practical startup help. You know, things like accelerators at universities, for example, I know in the US they've got these really, really awesome like business incubators and accelerators where they'll basically give you access to space, resources, mentoring, um, books, knowledge. It's the sort of stuff that if you really want to foster a culture of young people starting up, just giving them access to loans is the wrong thing. Because you don't want to, you know, there's already a problem with that out there. I think what it's kind of teaching people to fish essentially. Um, so I think yes and no. Um, yeah, I don't know what are your thoughts? Um... To be honest, yeah, I mean, I invested a few grand before, well, before we even got the loan, like about eight months ago. Uh, that was, you know, that was hard-earned money that I was working with the other, other business to earn. Mm -hmm. um, so every penny of that, we were careful about spending. And as James said, we, you know, we went down the wrong path so many times, but um, because we constantly adapted and, and, and learnt from our mistakes, we've got to the position now where we actually have a business model that is very different from what it was when we first started. It works now, it makes profit, and now we've got that loan as more of a buffer, really. Mm. Um, we've taken another member of staff, so it's there to just to cover potential, maybe if we lose one of our clients, we've got about 15 now, so we've got enough to cover us um, easily and make small profit, and it's just sort of there as a buffer, I think, and as James said, it's very important to not give the loan out just regardless of anything. You need to actually go out there um, work for a bit yourself, actually make the mistakes, yeah. then make at least, it, uh, at least turning over a little bit of profit to prove to, to yourself that it does work. Yeah. Then the loan comes in as sort of a buffer. Uh, and we had to go for a very long process to get the loan. Like, I think the processes that they've got um, are quite decent anyway. Like We had to submit a business plan, bank figures, accounts that we've got. We had to, it wasn't just we got a five grand loan. You know, we, we actually had to give in a lot of information, but um, yeah, I definitely think it would be it's it's helpful to have that, and as James said, more support and knowledge for grow, you know budding entrepreneurs, as it were. Great. And if you could give one piece of advice to UEA students that are graduating this year, what mm. would it be? Piece of advice. Mine would be. I've never been really talented at anything. I've mm -hmm. been just one of those guys which just works hard you know, get, gets the A grade, but I haven't really got a, um, like a particular talent at anything. What I do have is a ridiculous, sickening work ethic, which will destroy <laughs> you know, a, a, anyone. While the other guy's sleeping, I'm working, or w when he's eating, I'm working. Okay. And I think James is the same as well, and that's why we're very like-minded. We didn't really know each other before we met mm -hmm. for the business. We sort of knew of each other, but mm. where, we, where we actually connect is on that, on that level. Um, so, my advice is um, uh, just, just work really hard, uh, pick an area you actually want to focus on, work really hard to develop that skill in that area. If you've already got a talent and you don't foster, foster the skill, you'll just lose it eventually. So it's really hard to actually combine your work ethic with the skill you want to go into, and then, you know, then, you, you, then you'll be at a really decent level, 100%. 
I'd say dream big, uh, really big, because it just seems, I don't know, to, like, I was really inspired by startup culture and what really got me involved in it was looking at what the people in Silicon Valley were doing. So like the US culture is, it's not like you can't do this, you can't do something, it's, you know, why not? Or like they're aiming to do, you know, topple the next big thing. Yeah. Um, so I think my advice would be, don't listen to people who are negative and tell you that you can't do something or that's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being realistic is the most commonly travelled road to mediocrity. Um, so I guess just dream really big and be prepared to work hard for, you know, what you want to do. Um, that's probably my advice. Okay, and as UEA graduates, what is the one thing that you would say that you miss most about studying here? Freedom. <laughs> yeah, that nonchalant attitude, isn't it? Yeah. You just wake up and you haven't got to really worry about anything, especially if you do a history degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like the lifestyle, you, you don't really appreciate it. Well, you do appreciate it, obviously, but then when you graduate and you get into the real world, and you, know, you look back and you just think, you know, some days I see students on campus and you're just so jealous. You know, you've got no worries, no trouble wake up whenever, go to a few lectures. Um, so probably everything about the student experience really was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, well, thanks very much for coming in. We wish you the best of luck. And once again, congratulations on being awarded the Startup Loan. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thanks okay. All that's left for us to say now is thanks to our guests, James Thomas, Dave Duncan and Richard Laverick for joining us. And thank you for watching Viewpoint. Don't forget to find us on YouTube to discover more of our extended interviews. We'll be back in a couple of weeks for your fix of news and features. In the meantime, pick up a copy of Concrete or visit Concrete online for the latest news on campus. Thanks for watching.